All right, I'll, I'll get started. Just just being just take uh, being mindful of everyone's time. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Gary Hines. So welcome to the Master of Finance uh, webinar, um, where we're going to talk about the Master of Finance program offered at the Smith School of Business. I just want to say before we get started, um, hopefully everyone is doing well and keeping safe. Uh, we're going to cover a lot of different areas about this program. Um, so if you have any questions, I do ask that you hold off until the end of the presentation. But if I do mention something that you're a little bit confused about or you want a little bit more of a clarification, please feel free to put that in the Q&A. I'm joined today by Jen Mayer, who is going to be answering some of your questions in the Q&A while we, we go through the presentation. But again, uh, we will be discussing a few topics today. So um, if you can hold off uh, for the questions until the end, that will be great. First off, we want to do a land acknowledgement. Smith Toronto is situated on the traditional territory of the Huron-Wendat and Piton First Nations, the Seneca and the Mississaugas of the Credit River. We are grateful to be able to live, learn, and play on these lands. So. If you're all here, hopefully you're all here for the right the, the the right reasons. You signed up for this program and you're not like, oh, this is not what I signed up for. So let me just tell you what you're here for. So this is the Smith Master of Finance program offered out of the Smith Toronto facility. It is a one year program. You can take this program while you work. So it's a one year while you work program and it's offered in two different formats, which we'll discuss a little bit later on in the presentation. So this program is offered out of uh, Toronto. So if you are taking this program, we'll discuss the different ways you can take it and the different uh, offerings that we have in this program. First, let me introduce myself. So my name is Gary Hines. I am the director for the Master of Finance program at the Smith Toronto. So I am located in Toronto. Uh, that's why I said good afternoon when I introduced myself. So I work out of the Smith Toronto facility, uh, downtown Toronto. So I came uh, to Canada as an international student in 2016 to pursue my Master of International Business. And I enjoyed the school so much. I enjoyed working with the people. So I decided to move on over to the, um, the staff side of things. So now I am the director for the Master of Finance program. So what is the Master of Finance program? So what this program is, it gives you a deeper and broader understanding of finance. I know many of you may have looked at our curriculum, which we will talk about a little bit later and see that it, there are a lot of overlaps um, with, it, with the CFA. The difference is that our program, is, it gives you the knowledge and tools to move immediately from the theory to real world application. So while our program overlaps with the CFA, it is a little bit more, it is more practical. So we're using real world examples. So we're taking that theory that you're using in the CFA and we're making it more applicable to real world situations. So the lessons that you're learning in the program, you're able to apply it to the workplace uh, the next day. So it gives you a solid understanding of the current financial climate and market trends. And if you are in finance, I wanna say that it is a really exciting time to be uh, learning about finance. There's just so much going on. So it is a great opportunity to learn about what's going on in the market and different ways and different tactics you can use, utilize to advance your career. We also uh, provide the opportunity or the ability for you to communicate your ideas and information more accurate, accurately and concisely. So one of the big things and one of the differentiating factors for this program is that we have a communication uh, course uh, so it allows you to take all that information that you have and be able to present it to people who may not have had the same level of in information so that they can understand your teaching and understanding uh, of finance. So we have, uh, this program is team-based, so you will be working in a high-performance team. Uh, we also, this program will help you with your personal development, uh, so it'll help you thrive within today's business environment. And in this program itself, you will have access to our Smith Career Advancement Center. Just wanted to mention for those of you who just joined, um, and for those of you who joined earlier, I didn't mention that if you are registered for this webinar, you will receive a, 
a copy of the recording. This is being recorded and you will receive a copy of the recording just so that you can play it over to, to capture anything that you may have missed. So as I mentioned, this program is offered in two different formats. So we have the in-person format and we have the blended format. So our in-person format is delivered live in our Smith Toronto facility. So we are located at 200 Front Street West. So we're minutes away from Bay Street, minutes away from Union Station. We have a fabulous facility. Uh, we occupy 25,000 square foot of uh, teaching and learning facility. So we have a nice 360 view of the downtown area. So our program starts once every year. Our program runs from June to April. So we're currently wrapping up one of our sections, our sessions right now, and they're going on a holiday break. And then they'll come back, our current students, that is, they'll come back in the new year, and then the program will wrap up in April. So this version of the program, it will be in person. So you will be coming to the facility to attend classes. Our classes happens once every weeknight and every other weekend. Even though our program is offered out of the Smith Toronto facility, we do have a one week residential session or an in person session at Queen's uh, University. So that's in Kingston, where the program is housed. And we do have a, a three day residential session at Smith Toronto. Uh, apologies, it says four day session here, but that is actually going to be a three day session. And throughout your time in the program, you will have ongoing uh, support from our career center. Uh, there are different ways that you can also get involved while you're in the program. We have clubs that you can join, uh, case competitions, and of course, networking opportunities. So with regards to the blended format, so it is a mixture of the online and live format. Um, so it gives you flexibility to learn anywhere you are in the world, but the quality of the content, the learning and engagement will remain the same as you are, as uh, if you were receiving this uh, if you are receiving the format or the, the content in person. So the program runs at the same time in, in sync with the in-person session. So it starts the same time. Um, you will get a blend of online learning and live classes, the same as it says with one weeknight and every other weekend. Um, so you could take this program online from anywhere in the world. Uh, but we'll talk a little bit more uh, about the blended and, and taking it anywhere in the world because there are some things that you should think uh, consider if you're taking it outside of Canada. We do ask that even though you are taking the blended learning format of this program that you will have to be available for that one week in person session in Kingston and that three day session in Toronto. So even if you're taking it um, let's say you're in Calgary and you're taking the blended for, uh, version of this program, you will be required to come to, to, to those live sessions. Um, and I'll explain to you why that is. And you will receive the same level of support that the in-person students are receiving as well. You do have access to those career and coaching opportunities. You can still join the clubs, take part in the case competitions, and you will have opportunities uh, for attending to attend networking events as well. So let's look at a comparison of both of these uh, programs or both of these formats side by side. So you are still going to earn a master of finance degree, even if you're taking the in-person or the blended format of this program. So even if you're taking it blended, you're not going to see it say online version or online delivery. It's just going to be a master of finance degree. The program, as I mentioned, starts the same time. It is a June 12th start. A June start and it will go in for 12 months. So for the format of the program uh, for the in-person, it is every evening uh, and weekend classes. Uh, so weekend, every other weekend you'll have class, but every week you will have a class at least once a week at the Smith Toronto location. For the blended version, again, it, it is an asynchronous learning. So you will have live remote instruction and two immersive sessions at Smith Toronto uh, and in Kingston. So with regards to the team-based learning, uh, both programs will be required. You will both be required, um, regardless of which format you're taking, you'll be on a team. So the in-person, you will have in-person teams. 
if you're taking the blended, you will have virtual teams um, and there will be some team building workshops uh, in person during the Kingston residential. And with regards to the curriculum, as I mentioned, you'll be taking the same as the in-person. So if you're in blended, you're taking the same courses happening around the same time. The only caveat here is that the elective options may differ because some of the electives are going to be offered virtually, but then some are going to be online and you will find that out closer to the time when you're selecting your, um, your elective. So if there are uh, certain electives that you want to take in person, then you'll have to be available to come in person to take those electives. One of the things I want to mention about the blended is that if you are deciding to take the blended program, but you're somewhere, let's say you're in China or India or somewhere with a huge time difference, it may be a little bit more challenging for you because you'll have to take the class at the time it's being offered in Toronto. So if you're taking the classes, you'll have to be up uh, for that time. And then you'll have to find time to work with your team who may be working on at East, East Coast time. Uh, so that's one of the challenges. The other challenge is that if you take this program as an international student and you're taking the blended format and you decide you don't want to come to Canada, you will not be eligible for a postgraduate work permit. So if you're thinking about working after the program in Canada, you will not be eligible because for anyone to be eligible for the postgraduate work permit, you would have had to come be in person to take that program. So just a little bit of uh, some information there if you are considering the blended format of the program and you're uh, overseas as an international student. So let's look at our curriculum and the courses that we offer. As I mentioned, there are some courses that looks like they overlap with the, the CFA. So we have our core courses. So we have a total, you're gonna be taking a total of 10 courses when you're doing this program. Um, eight of those are gonna be core courses. And then you're gonna be asked to select two out of five electives and that will make up your 10 core courses. So we start off our program with corporate finance and financial statements. And we have quantitative analysis and economics advanced financial modeling, which is taught by uh, one of Canada's premier uh, mark, uh, advanced modeling uh, organizations, the Marquee Group. So it's taught by two of the founding partners. Uh, one teaches one section, the other teach another. They, they have taught all over the world. They teach banks. Um, and you're going to be learning how to create a financial model from scratch. So it's a great uh, practical application um, course, and it's very popular amongst our students. Then we have equity markets, fixed income instruments and markets, advanced portfolio management. The course that I mentioned earlier, communication and finance, which will be kind of offered throughout the year. Um, then we will wrap up your core courses with derivatives. Then we move on to the electives and you get to choose two out of these five electives. So we have financial technology and innovation, intro, and al intro to alternative investments, investment banking, AI and finance, sustainable finance. One of the great things about the school and the finance, uh, master of finance program is that we're always looking for, for what's going on in the industry, what's going on out there and finding ways to adapt our curriculum to make sure that the students are getting valuable information coming out of the program. So these are, that's why it says electives are subject to change because every year we're looking at what is what we're offering to see if we can change it or if there's something that should be added. The most recent one that we added was sustainable finance. Uh, so that one has become popular. It's getting every year, it's getting more and more popular. People are looking for, for more, more ways to, to, to learn about sustainable finance. But for next year, these are the courses that we are going to be offering uh, in the program. But again, they are subject to change uh, depending on what's going on uh, in the market. So I know I mentioned to you and I spoke about these residential sessions or these on-site sessions that we have. And I mentioned that this program is a full-time while you work program offered out of our Smith Toronto facility. So some of you may be asking, well, yes, you said that, but then you're saying that we have to have this in-person um, session in Kingston. And why are we doing that? So there are a few, there are a couple of reasons why we have this session in Kingston. 
One of those reasons is that we're able to complete one of our courses while in Kingston. So it is a fun time during this period where students get to come together, uh, complete one of our courses. Uh, the program takes care of all of your accommodation, your parking if you're driving, and your meals. So anything that students will have to worry about for in this regard is getting to Kingston and returning from home from Kingston. So if you've listened to me talk about the structure of our program, and I mentioned that you'll have class once a week and every other weekend, it sort of feels like a part-time schedule, like you're, you're not there all the time. So imagine starting the program and you come into a class where you don't know anyone and you're just there for three and a half hours on a night and then you leave and you go home because you're coming in after work. You're maybe saying like, I don't get to talk and interact with people. I don't know how do I form relationships and connections with these people? How do I make my team stronger? This is one of the reasons why we do the residential or on-site in-person sessions in Kingston to start off our program because it helps you feel like a full-time student for that week. It gets you to, to get to meet people, to interact with people. It also help, helps you form the bonds that you're going to, to, to need to, to help to have a high performing team. So that's another reason why we do that. And if, if you weren't a student at Queens prior, then you would not have the great fortune of being in Kingston and being at Goods Hall at our main campus. And we really want our students to experience that, to kind of get, get that feeling of being a student at Queens. Uh, so we really, really appreciate um, doing this in the summertime. And it's a really great experience. It can be intense. It can be very busy. But students really love and appreciate the time they spend. And Kingston is truly beautiful and amazing in the summertime. It is a beautiful city. And we really enjoy bringing our students here. And I'm going to give you, I'll show you a copy of our schedule for this session. So the session is, is quite compact. It's quite busy. So as I mentioned, one of your courses, financial statement and uh, corporate finance, that's going to be completed during this residential session. So it is, it is very busy. It is very intense. Um, but we do have fun things planned for students as well. We do have like a boat trip plan. We give you an opportunity to go around uh, Kingston and have a meal there with your team, with your, your new classmates. And we have like the Smith Challenge. So there are a lot of fun things also uh, planned for this session. So we really enjoy bringing the students there and it's a really excellent time. With regards to how you're gonna be supported during your time in the program, as I mentioned, we do have access, to, you will have access to our career services. So we have our career services team, our CAC, our Career Advancement Center, they're broken up into two different teams. So we have our corporate team, uh, corporate relationship team, and then we have our career coaches. So our corporate relationship team, they're the ones that are responsible for going out to the big banks, to the hedge, the asset management firms, pension funds, and they're the ones, oops, sorry, they're, they're, they're responsible for forming these relationships to help, you know, build, build that network, to bring the, the companies to the campus, to meet our students, to recruit our students, to, to get you to have coffee chats. So they're the ones responsible for that. Our career coaches, though, they're the ones you can book those one-on-one -on -one appointments with. They'll help you with your resume creation, help you with salary negotiation, job search strategies, interview preparations, a host of things. And you can book as many appointments as you want with them, and they'll help guide you through all of that. They also host workshops throughout the year to make sure that you're best prepared. Whether you're looking to get into finance or you're looking to advance your career in finance, they can help you with that and the program can help you with that as well. Um, they help you make connections with, you know, alumni. And one of the great things about this program is that this program has been around since around 2011. So we have a huge amount of alumni in this program. I'll talk about that a little bit later as well. So this program is, we have a big part of our program is experiential learning. You know, it's, it's a program where you learn uh, the necessary skills to be successful within finance. But, you know, we also want you to get involved. We also have things that you can do outside of that. There are competitions that we take part in. So we host uh, the Smith Women in Finance. So we have a club uh, that are women in finance and they host a case competition. 
but we also take part in other competitions as well. We've recently put together our team to, to take part in our CFA ethics challenge, our CFA research challenge, Van Berkham small cap case competition. These are some of the, the pillars and some of the stable case competitions that we take part in. The, Nash, the NIBC, National Investment Banking Competition, well, we, we, haven't, we don't know when they'll be back up there. We, don't, we didn't see anything for them this year, but this is something that we take part in every year. And when our teams make it to finals to represent us either in Montreal or in New York or in Vancouver, the program typically takes care of any of those. Uh, so if you're going on to represent the school, you, their accommodation and, all, and your travels will be on the school. We've had teams go and take part in finals in Vancouver, in New York, in, in Montreal. So it's a really great opportunity for our students. And there are also clubs that you can become a part of. So we have, you can become part of the class executive. So you can be the class president for your section. Our program is usually broken up into two sections. So you could be your class president and they usually form their board. You can be that executive and those people are voted in to, to the positions by your peers. As I mentioned, we have the Smith Women in Finance uh, group. They also have QAF. QAF stands for the Queen's University Alternative Asset Fund. It is a fund, it is a hedge fund run by students. They have over $500,000 in that they're in their portfolio that they're managing. So these students are managing real money. Um, it's completely student run. I think it's one of the only thing in North America where you have a fund of this type and it's run in conjunction with all of the other programs at the school. So it was started by the MBA program, uh, but then the MBA program would introduce, then they had MFINs join with them. And now it's, they have all of the other programs or MMAs or MMAIs, all of the other programs are now involved in this. Um, so it's a very popular club and it's really great. Then we have our EDI club, which stands for Equity, Diversity, Inclusion, and Indigeneity. Um, they look, look at different, they try to make sure that everyone feels included and they're seen in the programs. And we ask that everyone who's joining our programs, we want to make sure that everyone can be their authentic self. So these are just some great opportunities for you to get involved while in the program. So this is Julius. Julius was also a part of COAF. Um, as, he, as I mentioned, he says, you know, we, we were investing real money, so we had to do real research. When I, when I came in as CEO, I wanted to ensure there was a process around everything. I used what we were doing as part of a CFA research challenge and brought it to Quaff. So he was involved in a many, many different things while, during his time in the program, and he had very positive things to say about Quaff. So there are other things that we have uh, in the program, such as workshops. Uh, so we have the merger modeling workshop, capital restructuring modeling. So these are run also by the Marquee Group. CFA prep also run by uh, the Marquee Group. And then you have other opportunities to learn additional, additional, um, additional training in different skills. So we give you access to to, Py, to Udemy, and then you can learn our Python Tableau, and then you can continue to work on your leadership skills if you want to become like a class executive. The program is a per, proud partner of the CFA Institute. So usually when they have any, we offer scholarships for anyone's writing level one, two, or three. Uh, when the CFA has any events, we will get invitation to those. Those are other networking opportunity for our students. We're also a proud uh, partner of Kaya. So anyone who's interested in, in writing that examination, we do offer scholarships for those as well. We're also a proud partner of Game Plan and the Canadian Olympic Committee. So we would have students in our program who are you know, former athletes or even current athletes who compete in the Olympics and they want to you know, figure out what their life is after competing and they would join our programs. We also have a great partnership with game plan where we we pair MFIN students with current athletes and they go through a stock market simulation that was started by one of our MFIN students and we we're great and uh, lucky to have uh, to be part of that organization. So let's take a look at our class profile. Um, so we have currently this year we have 86 students the average age for our class is 31 years. Uh, people have average about five years work experience. 
as I mentioned before, like even though some of our curriculum covers topics in the CF in the CFA, we do have some students who already have their CFA level one, level two, and some charter holders even take this program because there is a benefit of learning. Yes, you learn the theory through the CFA um, certification, but people want to know how can I apply that? So they come and they take this program. So these are some of the, the, the breakdowns of the CFA levels for students in our program. Our program is very diverse in terms of nationality. We have people who take the program from all over the world. Here are just some, some of the, the citizenships for students who are in our program. In terms of a breakdown of male, female, we have uh, one third of those female and two thirds are male. 80% of our student population is domestic and 20% are international. So one of the things we're very proud of is that diversity of experience and that diversity of your background. That helps with the overall classroom conversation and discussions that we have because people come from different backgrounds with different experiences and it, 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 it what it creates is an overall uh, and it enriches the experience and the conversations had throughout the program. So let's, let's get to what a lot of people may be here and want to find out about is how can I apply? You've told me, you've told me a lot about the program. Um, so you get to work, when you submit, all, you, all we need from you is to submit uh, a copy of your resume and an unofficial transcript. And that gets you started with the process. Um, this is an older picture. Uh, so Ryan Hill used to be the application advisor. Now it is Jen Mayer. So I'll have to get Jen's picture up here now. So when you submit that preliminary application, you will be paired with Jen, who will be working with you throughout the entire application process. So there is no AI robot that's like this, you send in your application and it just goes to a black hole and you just, you don't know who you're communicating with. You're actually communicating with a real person who is going to help work, walk you through the entire process and help you with your application. But the only thing you need to start is an unofficial transcript and a copy of your resume. There's no application fee for that. So it's really great for us to see um, your experiences and we can help you guide you through your entire application process. So what do we need? What do you, do you qualify for the program? Well, here are the things that we look for when uh, looking at candidates. So we do require you to have an undergraduate degree. Um, if you have an undergraduate degree in business, economics, that's fantastic because this is a master's program. We do look for a minimum of two years relevant work experience within finance, um, the finance industry, that would be great. Or even if you have even if you don't have that, we do look for like some really strong internships, successful completion of GMAT or successful completion of the CFA level one. If you do not have a GMAT, you can also do the GRE. So two letters of reference, uh, resume, cover letter, uh, and interview will all wrap up the application process. So as you see on the side here, if you have less than two years work experience, does that mean you do not qualify? No. We do look for exceptional candidates who have two years uh, less than work, two years work experience, but you may be considered if you have a really strong GMAT score or successfully completed CFA level one exam. And if you have an undergraduate degree in business or economics or really strong internships, that's also a great qualifying factor. So we do get a lot of questions from students asking, well, when is the deadline? So the great thing about the program is that we operate on a rolling admissions basis. What that means is that you can apply up until the start of the program. However, the caveat to that is if you're an international student, we would encourage you to apply sooner rather than later because there is an extreme backlog of visa applications. So if, you're, if you have to get your visa, you would need to like apply for it ASAP. So if you are an international student looking to take this program and you want to start it for the 23, the class of 2024, so that means you're starting in June of 2023, we would encourage you to send that in your application ASAP because there is that backlog. 
But if you are a domestic student, uh, the great thing is that we do have an enrolling admissions period. Uh, so we do not have this deadline where you have to submit by this day or that day. You can submit up until the start of the program as long as you can get all your documents into us. So a lot of people have a lot more questions about this, the, these, these admission standards. So let me just say, these are typically what we look for. However, we do look at your full application and we look at your full history on a whole, and that's how we make a determination on your application. So some people may not have everything on this, on the, that we require, but if you have like great work experience, um, you've been working, or even if there are different ways to improve your application, let's put it like that. I can give you one example, but every case is, is different. I can give you one example. So let's say your undergrad is in marketing, but you have your CFA level one or CFA level two. We kind of look at that at a little bit more because it shows that you're trying to get into finance and you just need that extra, you just need something else to help you get in there. So that, that can be a determining factor uh, of getting into the program. Well, let's say your, your degrees in philosophy, but you have CFA level two, or you have a very great, great GMAT score. Then we would all obviously look at that as well. But every case is different. And we look at those on a case by case basis. And that's why we always say, we, we can't give you an answer without seeing your full resume and an unofficial copy of your transcript. So if you want a little bit more information about your, your candidacy and whether you would be an, uh, a good uh, applicant for this program or if you would qualify for this program, that's all you have to do is just submit that unofficial transcript and a copy of your resume and then we will review and then we will work with you. So in terms of fees, uh, this is the cost of the program or domestic students, it is 40,300. For international students, it's 73,300. Um, accommodations in Toronto is not covered for these, but your fees can includes your full tuition, books, case study, in, um, and other learning materials throughout the program, your meals and accommodations for the residential session. But as I mentioned, that will cover the accommodations in Kingston. But because our program is a Toronto-based program and most of our students will be living in Toronto, the fees will not cover accommodations in Toronto, but it will cover your meals in Toronto or some of your meals in Toronto. And any case competitions that you take part in, these fees will cover that. All right, so now we're going to head on over to any, if you have any questions, but before I com uh, conclude, I have to tell you where you can submit that unofficial transcript and a copy of your resume. So just go to smithqueens.com slash mfin and then you can submit that unofficial transcript and a copy of your resume. Again, it doesn't cost anything. There is no fee to do that. Um, so it's completely free to, to submit that application. And then we will work with you as individuals one-on-one -on -one and review your full application. We're not able to give you answers specifically on your, on your profile until we actually can see it. So some people may have questions that are very specific to your case, it's better for you to submit that information to us first, and then we can work with you one-on-one. -on -one. Um, it's gonna be a little bit difficult to answer questions if you have a specific question about uh, your resume or something that's on your resume. So now I'm gonna pass it on over to you to ask any questions. I know I've been talking on and on and on for, for a very long time. Uh, now I'm gonna give you the opportunities to have any of your questions answered. That was unclear. So I'm just going to pull up my Q&A. Uh, so thank you so much for, for listening. All right. So the first question we have here is, I am a CFA level two candidate. I graduated from three years advanced diploma in, medical en in mechanical engineering 2014. Would that be enough to pass the eligibility? So you see, this is one of those questions where is we need more information. It could be a yes, it could be a no. We need more information. And this is one of those situations where we need you to submit your resume because we also have to see your work experience. We wanna get a full picture of who you are. This, this is not in, enough information for us to go on. This could be a maybe and maybe not. So we just need to look at your full resume. So please submit that, uh, 
please submit a copy of your resume and unofficial transcript. And then we can be able to work with you uh, on a one-on-one one -on -one and give you a proper answer. Okay, next question is, would you even consider a three-year converged diploma? Again, it's another question that is, there's not enough information here for us to go on. We, we don't make decisions based on one piece of information. We have to look at your full, full, uh, your full resume. We have to look at everything that you've been doing. Where have you been working? Do you have a CFA? Do you have a GMAT? Like there's a lot of information that we use. We look at your undergrad score. We look at your scores. Um, so there are a lot of things that we have to, to look at. So please submit the, your resume an unofficial transcript to smithqueens.com slash mfin, and we'll happily work with you one-on-one -on -one to answer these questions. Next question is, is it mandatory to do a GMAT or CFA level one if I have a bachelor's in accounting with two years working experience? Yes, we would still, in this situation, we would still require a GMAT or a CFA level one. Um, because your work experience, it just hits the head. Uh, it's just two years work experience. Um, it says two years plus, but again, I don't have enough information to give you an accurate answer. Uh, this is just based on what you're asking me here. I would say you would still need to have a GMAT or a CFA level one, but again, it would be best to just submit that resume and unofficial transcript and I, we can better advise you. Next question. Oh, this is a good question for everyone. Do I have to travel to Kingston? Is it mandatory? That is an excellent question. Yes, you will have to travel to Kingston. Anyone who is looking to take this program will need to be to Kingston for all the reasons that I mentioned earlier before, because we are going to complete one of your courses. Um, so there is no getting around that. You will have to be in Kingston to complete that course. You will have to be there to start working with your team. Um, so that one is mandatory. Excellent question. Next question, is there a fee for pre-application assessment? Another good question, no, there is no fee to submit that resume and unofficial transcript. The only time you have to pay anything is if you are enrolled in the program, that's when you have to pay a fee. But other than that, if you're just submitting your application to be considered, then you do not have to, you do not have to, um, to pay anything. Next question, hi, I have GRE, can it replace with GMAT in requirement? Yes, it can, great question. We will also accept the GRE if you have that. So if you decide you don't want to do the GMAT or you don't want to do the CFA, we also accept the GRE. Another question is, is there any scholarship program? So we do offer an entrance scholarship for the program, but that is not something that you have to apply for that will be assessed at your time of your application. And if you are awarded that scholarship, it will be granted to you at the time when you receive your offer letter. Any other scholarships, you are free to look at the website uh, of the school and you, will, you can see what other scholarships you may qualify for. I also didn't mention this program is OSAP eligible. So if you, are, if you do qualify for OSAP, you can get OSAP for this program um, because this is a considered a full-time while you work program. So this program is considered full-time. Um, so if you are an international student as well, this is just a, another piece of information I'm giving you. If you're an international student and you finish this program, this will be considered a full-time program. So if, and it is one year, so you are eligible to get a, a work, a postgraduate work permit after. Next question, can international student use loan without or with cosigner for tuition? That's not a question that I'll be able to answer. Um, that's something that you will have to be, you'll have to work with your bank um, to, to, to get an answer for that. I can only spoke, speak more about the programming side of things. Um, so regard, regards to, to loans, you'll have to speak with your banks if you're an international student. Um, we do have we do have someone you can use as well for the loans. Oh, their name is slipping me right now. Um, the program that we use, maybe Jen can help me uh, type it in there. Uh, the the um, the international. It's loans. a prodigy. Prodigy. 
Prodigy, yes, we do have Prodigy that you can use to apply for. Don't we have another one, Jen? Uh, it, was, it was Prodigy and somebody else. I think there was another one that we also Just let used. me double check here. I, I think uh, one second, I'll come, I'll come back on once I find it. All right, thank you so much. I have Jen here who's gonna look up the other uh, institution that we use to help secure loans for, or not help to secure loans, but who we refer student, international students to, to, to get that loan. Next question, hello, please advise how this program differs from the CFA. Is the goal of the program to complement or provide practical skills not learned in the CFA curriculum? Thank you. Yeah, great question. And that is exactly correct. The goal of this program is to complement. If you do have a CFA, it is a little bit more practical. So while the CFA talks about a lot more of the theory side of things, we, this program is a little bit more practical and skills based. So you're learning, you don't learn to build a financial model from scratch in the CFA. This program does that. You don't learn how to, to communicate well in finance. That's, this program does that. I could just give you one of the examples that I heard uh, or that one of the workshops that we held for our students in communication. Uh, one of the things that was advised is that you know you know all those spreadsheets sometimes where you you're doing a spreadsheet and it has a lot of numbers in there and people take that spreadsheet and they put it on a slide one of the advice that was given to our students is that you don't take all the information from the spreadsheet and put it on the slide what you do is you take the relevant information that you want the the audience to focus on and that's what you put on the slide instead of putting a full full uh, slide, a full Excel spreadsheet that has so much information, because while you're speaking, the people are not no longer going to be, your audience is no longer going to be listening to you. They're going to be looking at all the numbers that you have there, trying to discern what you're trying to tell them. So you take what you want your audience to digest, and that's what you put on the slide. So that's a difference of our CFA, but we're a proud partner of the CFA. And we do encourage our students who are taking the CFA exam, you know, to continue on that track, because it's a great compliment. Great question. Hi, Gary. Just to pop back in here, it's sure. um, M, it's M Power. M Power. That's the other one. So yeah. that's the and one. If anybody, we're yeah, for. yeah. And I'm happy if anybody has any questions further around that, we can certainly set up a call or we can uh, connect via email as well. Oh, so the voice you're hearing, everyone. Thank you, Jen. That is Jen Mayer. So she's the one that when you submit that unofficial transcript and resume, she's the one that's going to be working with you one on one and help you answer all of your questions. And we're going to uh, review your full resume at that time. So the next question we have is, when is the latest time by which we should submit our application to be eligible for the 2023? Another great question. So as I mentioned, we operate on a rolling admissions basis. So you don't, you don't, there is no deadline. Uh, you can apply up until the start of the program as long as you're able to get all your information in. However, if you are an international student, we will ask that you apply ASAP because there is a backlog with regards to processing of your student visas. So you would, we would ask that you apply ASAP. Great question. Next question we have here, how often will we have exams? So our program itself has different, different terms of um, we evaluate your learning differently. So for this program, there are two courses that has exams, um, your quantitative analysis and economics that has an exam and your financial modeling that will have an exam. The other ways we assess your, your learning throughout the program would be through case studies. Um, so that means you have to write papers. There will be final presentations. So each course does it differently, depending on what they view as the best way to assess your learning outcome, your learning in the, the course itself. Great question. Uh, next question is, and do we have to go to Kingston for the exams? No, no, no. The, the exams themselves. So the only time when you're in Kingston you will be completing the program, uh, the course, and whatever that course requirement is, you'll be completing that there. Once you're back in Toronto, everything else happens in Toronto. So the only time you have to go to Kingston or you'll be required to go to Kingston is for the opening session and then for graduation, but everything else will be happening in Toronto. Great question. 
by the end of this program, can we confidently sit for CFA level one for someone who hasn't given level one before? This is an excellent question. So this program is not a CFA prep program. Um, some people are coming into the program already done CFA level one, or they've done CFA level two, level three, or even our charter holders. So our program doesn't prepare you for the CFA because we have students in the program who have already done that and they're looking to advance their skills. So it's not a CFA prep course and it's not a research-based program. The program is taking the skills that you're going to be needing, you're going to need within the workplace. So it's all about practical application. So it's not to help you prepare for the CFA. If you are looking to prep for the CFA, we do offer as well CFA prep courses. Uh, so that, but that is that is not within the program itself. Another great question, and hopefully that was helpful for anyone who is thinking about writing the CFA and thinking that this program will help prepare them for the CFA. It doesn't take away from your learning, but it's not. I, we don't want you to come into the program under the assumption that this will help you pass the CFA exam. It doesn't. It will help, but it's not a CFA prep course or prep program. All right, I don't see any other questions, but they were great and they were fantastic questions. And I thank you all for, for sharing them with me and, and asking those questions. It definitely shows that you are interested in the program and you want to make sure that this is the right program for you. If you think that this may be the right program for you, um, then you please feel free to, to submit the your unofficial transcript and a copy of your resume to smithqueens.com slash mfin. Um, sorry, uh, just, just to clarify one more thing again about the Kingston. So our program begins in Kingston. You will be required to come to Kingston to start the program. All you have to do is get to Kingston and return from Kingston, but we will take care of your meals, parking if you're driving, and your accommodation. So I, I have a full copy of the schedule for Kingston. So that's where our program begins. Um, so hopefully that was clear for everyone. Um, and, and everyone understands that you only have to get to Kingston and return from Kingston, but that's where the program begins. Our program begins in Kingston with the rest of your program. So you're going to be spending one week in Kingston. And then after that, the full program will be running out of Toronto. All right, so hopefully that was uh, clear for everyone. Everyone uh, understood everything. But again, if you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to us. We're happy to answer any and all of your questions. I thank you for taking the time uh, and spending some time with us here today and asking all, our, all, all of your questions. Uh, if you do have any other questions, feel free to reach out to us. And uh, you can please submit your unofficial transcript and a resume to smithqueens.com slash mfin. All right, so have a great rest of your day or night, depending on where you're, you're joining us from and take care till next time. Enjoy the holidays and happy new year. Bye-bye.